bit of a sad story. It was actually sold and gone the very next day. I got a phone call from the guy that bought it from me. Said he was stuck on the side of the road. It ends up, it just died. And the best he could get out of it was a backfire. We stayed on the side of the road for a good couple of hours, trying everything. And uh, just had me stumped. So years ago, I read on forums that they said, when you change your distributor, swap over your OEM drive gear, put the OEM one on the aftermarket one, because the teeth aren't machined exactly right, and it'll chew out your auxiliary drive shaft. So I thought, sounds like a crock to me. So anyway, I've actually found out that that is completely true because that's what happened to this car. Okay, so we're looking down where the distributor mounts into the engine block. But that edge sticking out there, that's the auxiliary drive shaft drive gear. So that gear there is stripped. So the, what we want to get to is behind this timing cover. Yes. Gotcha. And there it is. Right, so that is looking pretty dire. So just as a quick comparison. Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of the EL Falcon Resurrection. Uh, for those of you who watched the first video, you'll know where I left off. But for those who didn't, I would suggest go back and have a have a look, and you'll know exactly what's going on here. Um, right, quick update on where I'm at. I've cleaned all these gasket surfaces off here. I've had to pop the time the rocker cover off, but uh, more on that in a moment. So everything's in organised chaos down in there. So I've got all my bits and pieces cleaned up. This is timing cover. Got that all nice and clean now. That was uh, pretty manky and grossed out. Pop the old seal out. Got a new one in there. That little piece of chain guard has been replaced. That was really resiny and mucky in there, but all looking good now. Got our bits for our drive shaft and the drive shaft itself all cleaned up. The bracketry, nuts and bolts, bits and pieces all ready to go. And this is why the rocker covers off. I decided while I had everything pretty much stripped down to the point of the timing chain that I would get a timing chain kit so we've got our guides in there all our gaskets this is a new tensioner and here's the actual chain itself so, we're almost ready to go. So the first thing I'll be doing is replacing these chain guides. I'll be putting this auxiliary shaft back in just so that I can route the chain over it and get it all correctly aligned and timed up with the cam. Okay progress shot. New timing chain is on and I'll just try to, well the new chain guides are on. Let's try and get you down in there to show it. Now apparently the way to do this is this lines up 
with the auxiliary shaft timing mark and the camshaft gear has this on the side. Just have a quick look. The cam lobes, that one's facing down. And that one's facing down. Right, I'm having some trouble working out this pulley here. So the timing mark on the crank that I just showed you keys into there, which makes it roughly that when you're looking at the front of the engine. So in that position, the timing mark on here should line up with this, the timing mark on the timing chain cover. There it is there. So thing is, on this, I've marked it with white, the notch for the timing is opposite. Let me just insert a picture of a new one. Either that spun perfectly 180 degrees on the centre hub or that's how it's meant to be. It's uh, got me stumped for the moment so I've got the timing marks set up as per the manual. I've put my own little timing mark there so everything's going together as it's supposed to and um, we'll just see what happens. Okay it's actually several hours later and I've got a whole lot done. That's one of those jobs that once you get a roll on you just want to keep going with it and get some progress. So uh, the auxiliary shaft etc is all in, covers back on, pulleys back on, alternators bolted up, power steering pump is still hanging off. But yeah, we're making some pretty good progress. I've actually managed to get it to wind over. First, I cranked it over using a socket on the pulley and um, it went over fine. Two full revolutions, so that was good. So at the moment, I'll just see, yeah, you can see that, no problems. So that little timing mark right there. So we are top dead centre and that's actually the mark that I made. So if that's top dead centre and that's rotating clockwise then that mark would be just before top dead centre. So I'm going to call that good but yeah it um, what started off as a auxiliary shaft replacement has morphed into a uh, Hassley timing chain replacement, but uh, I think we've got the better of it now. So I'm going to call it a night, but uh, the next thing you guys will know, I'll be at it again tomorrow and um, see if it'll fire off. Okay, we've down to this now. Got two distributors here. I'm picking the best of the two. This one is definitely the one going in. It's a Bosch and it's made in Australia. This one doesn't say where it's made. Hmm. Okay, so this one was missing a clip, so I've got. Well, the clips from that are now on this. That's what came off it. That was a bit disappointing. Look at the difference. Much easier to flick on that than that. The, uh, the car's actually got a distributor cap in it, thankfully, because this one is awful. Yeah, look at that. Not much better in there. Rusty. 
That's okay though. I've seen them in good condition without this part, so I might keep that. So just as a comparison, we'll see if we can get a look down there now and see what it's supposed to look like. It's about the best angle I can do. Squared, sort of shaped, is how it should be. Okay, we have our distributor in down there. You can see it in there. So it's got distributor cap. Do a comparison on what what wires go where. And I'm pretty sure these are numbered. Yep. There's one, etc. etc. There's a six. So I've got this like a little mock-up here. That's the bit that goes on top of the distributor. I've got the old cap in the correct orientation to it. And then I'm orientating this the same and just checking those numbers on there match the old one there. That could be wrong to what it is now. Okay, progress, progress. So distributor is in, the cap's on, rotor button's in, TFI module's plugged in, this is to the coil, so that's in. So we've got a throttle body, throttle body, gas intake, inlet tube sitting on, rocket cover's still off, I've got my plug wires plugged in, this one I'm just about to plug that in, I had that plug out before, checking top dead centre, before I put it back in I just uh, whacked it in there, wound it over and there was a big fat spark, so uh, that's looking really promising for the moment, so I whack that back in and give it a quick wind over I mean it's only if it fires it'll be like kill it instantly because it's got no oil in it got no cooling system it doesn't matter for the moment it just needs to fire and then as soon as it does that I know it's good to go It lives, yes. Okay, after all of that drama, trying to work out if that timing was set up properly, it just, bang. Okay, let's continue. I'm chuffed about that. Okay, let's change out this oil filter. Let's have a look and see what comes out of this oil filter. I'm interested to know. Apart from goopy oil, I'm looking for metallics. That should be enough. I'm surprised. Look, there'd be shinies in there. Right, well, I was given a couple of these quite a few years ago, and I've been looking for an opportunity to use them. Let's give it a bit of a prime. I always like to do this pretty much fill it up and then rotate it around. Kind of like that. It's, it was full to the top, but by the time I've spilt it, by the time I rotate it round, all the element soaks it up, and there's pretty much nothing splashing around anymore. I got shown this a long time ago. It just helps with the first little startup. It's actually primed and uh, you don't lose oil pressure for too long.
bit of sealant just to make sure. So here we are, a substantial amount of time later from me finishing up this job and uh, actually in a new house now and um, I was digging through the phone and I actually discovered the footage of me reassembling this engine, thought I'd better finish it off and uh, get it online for everyone to appreciate. So anyway, I ended up getting a new second hand pulley because the pulley on this had indeed spun, so uh, possibly when it was doing all the backfiring, when that gear stripped out, that auxiliary drive gear, so uh, yeah, it was doing some major, major backfiring, so that intake section here, it just shredded that, so yeah, it was really blowing some steam off, so anyway, I got that on there and uh, it all timed up fine way way down in there you can see it down in there so she's uh, all going now and um, going great it actually runs the best it's run in well since I've ever owned it so I'm putting that down to the timing chain being replaced and just kind of getting the timing set everything's buttoned up correctly and spot on so um, yeah, it's uh, all good to go. Uh, I ended up having to drop the sump a little bit, ever so slightly. You can't kind of get it down very far. Let me just get under there and see if I can get a view of it. So I managed to drop the sump bolts out and uh, drop that sump down just enough so that I could uh, get that timing cover on a bit easier. Those, uh, they're the bolts. That, uh, thread into it some either side there so that uh, that made getting the timing cover on a lot easier but then my concern was that the sump gasket would leak so uh, before I put it back on I managed to get my finger up in between the uh, the actual block and the gasket in that gap in there when it was open um, get a reasonable amount of sealant in there after I'd give it a good clean and uh, buttoned it back up and it seems to have been okay it's not leaking anything so I think I'll dodge the bullet there but uh, all in all it's good to go so at the moment I've got it all jacked up in the air because uh, once I got it running it run great on LPG but it wouldn't run on petrol so First thing I assumed was that the petrol had sat for so long it had gone stale and it just didn't have enough oomph to uh, to make it run properly. I mean, it would idle on it, but that was it. You tried to uh, rev it up or accelerate when you're driving and it just not, it just wouldn't do it. So uh, I'll run you through what I actually did and where it led me. So as you can see, I've got uh, it all jacked up, wheel off, so I can get access to the fuel tank and I've removed the sender unit uh, pump assembly 
and um, that was kind of where I'm up to at the moment but the backstory for that was uh, I put some fresh fuel in this thing and it didn't do anything so well, as far as fixing the problem goes so uh, I was thinking it was a fuel delivery problem so I changed the uh, fuel filter and when I shook it out like in reversing it all this mud and brown muck come out of it and it's <laughs> holy moly so uh, I jumped the uh, starter relay just to pump some of the fuel through and it actually came out clean so I thought I was good to go um, started the car again it, it ran fine for a little bit and then it started to uh, miss on a couple of cylinders so in my process of diagnosing what was going on with it I'd switch over to LPG it had run perfect on all cylinders I switch back to petrol and it would miss really badly so the only thing I could think was injectors um, yeah were clogged and so I took off that fuel rail you've got a couple of bolts holding it on just pop them off you've got to pop those clips off pop those clips off there that's an o-ring fitting in there so this kind of pulls back out of the way you can get them off and um, they've got a little filter just inside the actual body here and they were clogged up with the same crap that was in the fuel filter so uh, I blew those out with some carb cleaner and there's like a little pintle at the front there, like a little pin sticking out and you can put that on a flat and you can push it up and down and that like opens and closes the injector. So I did that while spraying carb cleaner through it and so it's I'm doing sort of this two-handed job so it left sort of a, a round ring of brown so it actually had it inside the injector as well so i did that until they all came clean put it all back together fired it up and guess what it didn't fix it although it was running on six cylinders again so anyway we move on to the next stage right so i've got a bit of show and tell here so i replaced the fuel pump and the fuel filter in one go and this is the filter that came out of it you can see that's the sort of stuff that was in it you can see that's the inlet there we'll see if we can see down in there a bit there we go yeah so that brown muck that's just the staining but it was everywhere so can't see it so much on this side but uh, pretty much as I was shaking that out it was just splashing out everywhere so that's the filter so here's the pump all in bits this is the old pump so that's what I had that's what it was and get a load of the state of that and here's that gunk that was on it look at that that was what was inside the tank so and the filter I'm not sure if we can show this you should be able to see something through that filter I'll do a comparison in a minute you can just see <laughs> tiniest bit through there so that's what came out so uh, that was pretty much my smoking gun fuel delivery problem Here's the uh, new, the whole assembly. You keep this bit and you just buy the new pump that comes with the filter. So, we'll see if we can get this filter. Yeah, look at that. You can see straight through it. So, that kind of tells you what was going on. While it was apart, I did a bit of a test on the fuel sender here. Ended up cleaning all those contacts up in there with some uh, bit of fine emery cloth and um, did some resistance measurements on the contacts here you can follow the wires that go down into there that's not one of them there so the other two actually run to the pump so it's easy to find out which is which and uh, so this is all good to go 
Uh, then I ran into my next snag. The gasket, the rubber gasket thing that went around here was just perished to hell and it was just, there was no saving it. So I thought I'd get uh, creative and found an o-ring that went around here just snugly and um, installed it only to find that it was leaking from underneath this connector here. This is sort of a through connector. Underneath here is an o-ring and it pokes through the other side. That little ring, that biggest part of the ring there, that's kind of snaps over it to hold it in position. So I've gooped this one up with some sealant to stop it leaking. So not only was that leaking, when I took it off again, the o-ring had swollen to like half its size again because it obviously wasn't compatible with petrol. So my little nifty fix just wasn't going to cut it. So um, I had to actually order the OEM part for this and it's just kind of a rubber sleeve with a little flare on it. Sits the, exactly the same shape as that, sits over that and uh, seals up against the fuel tank. So this is where you cannot escape some things because they know they've got you when they charge $45 for that rubber thing and um, you can't get it any cheaper because you just can't find it. So I saved myself a lot of money doing my own work but when things like that happen that kind of really grinds your gears. Right, so this is what all the fuss is about. This. That's it. $45, $46. Unbelievable. So, well, that's between the fuel filter, the pump and this. If it gets it going and running on petrol properly, then it's worth it and I'll never have to replace this again. So anyway, I'm going to just clean a little bit of that surface rust off there, get this on, and get this back into there. So there's a little bit of a sample of what was in the tank, except it wasn't just the mud, it was like sand and almost like it had been kind of river sand almost, but brown like that. So yeah. Right, so let's get this off. Ooh, it's been, petrol vapors have been making that blue gold gummy. Whew. Smells. Let's see if we can get a view in there. So I don't know if you can see, but there is still evidence of a little bit of sediment in there, but uh, that was like really thick in there before, so... Uh, I think we'll be okay. So this thing is a real juggle to get in. This is how it sits. So that's how the float moves inside. And that has to be flat on the bottom. And that's how these are orientated facing forwards. It doesn't look like it's going to fit, but it does. Whoever designed this must be good at jigsaws. Now, I just made that look real easy, but I can tell you 
when you're doing it for the first time, that is a real shit. Get that locking ring on. We have no leaks, I'm very happy to say. Okay, let's give it a test. Okay, we'll start her up on LPG first and get her running and then we'll switch over to petrol, see how we go. So we've got a full tank of gas. Hopefully that gauge will start coming up. It's running so nice and smooth now. Sometimes it takes a little while for that gauge to come up. I'm just keeping an eye on it because I've had a good old play with it. Anyway, we'll let it warm up for a minute and then we'll switch over to petrol. Right, well, here's a quick tech tip. Um, the gauge works better when you plug it in. So anyway, here's the moment of truth. And I'll switch across to petrol. <laughs> that didn't go well. I'm definitely having a senior's moment because uh, it seemed like the fuel wasn't priming up, so I wasn't sure which way around the uh, fuel lines went on the pump. So uh, we'll start her up on LPG and there's our fuel gauge working. Okay, let's see how we go. We'll switch over to petrol. Well, it's running. So before it wouldn't rev. So it's doing that and it's running on six cylinders. So <laughs> I'm just going to switch it off. Fires up straight away and revs. Okay, so the tech tip here is plug that in and the pump will work <laughs> and the gauge and also you'll see the white line goes on the top, black one on the bottom. I had them the wrong way around so I was really having a bit of a ditzy moment there. Uh, we've got a little bit of residual fuel just here but uh, when this one was down here, this was this is the outlet, so this was just deadheading because that's the return. So 
when I took that off here, it just sp sprayed because it, it pressured itself up. So there's probably fuel up in here a little bit. And it's just, yeah, it went everywhere. So keep an eye on that, make sure it's not actually a leak. But, um, oh good, it's not leaking from here. And that was the main concern. So, and it's not leaking from here. So uh, we'll call that good. Okay, so she's running, I say she, I call it other names when it's not working properly, but uh, we're running nice and smooth now. Well, you can hear it's kind of loping ever so slightly, but it always does that when I've been running on LPG for a long time. The switch over to petrol, it's like the uh, engine controller just takes a little bit to relearn and readjust itself, but um, there's nothing unusual about what it's doing now. This is the first time it's run on petrol properly for oof, I'm going to guess at easily two years. So yeah. So anyway I'll uh, wrap this video up here. Uh, thanks so much for hanging around till the end of the video. I know this one has been a long long time coming for all you use that were um, interested to see how it all ended up and uh, we sort of sidetracked a bit onto the petrol running problem but uh, I'm sure it will all be relevant to someone sometime or another so uh, anyway thanks for watching and uh, consider subscribing if you like the content if you have already I very much appreciate that and uh, I'll catch you all in the next one till then bye for now